Hey visionaries, Chris right here with Royal Realty Group, brokered by eXp Realty. Buying and selling a home can be a stressful process, but we are here to help you throughout the way. Feel free to reach out to us on all social media platforms at Royal Realty Group TX. Now enjoy the show with Cuff and Mo. How far is San Diego from LA? Um, depends when you're going <laughs> uh, and what time of day. Um, but if you leave on a weekday, it could take an hour and 20 minutes from San Diego to Anaheim. How long should it take if it was, if, if everything was normal? An hour and 20 minutes. Okay. If it's gotcha. During our crazy season, which is usually in the summertime, it could take up to four hours. So y'all literally have like what, one or two freeways there and people just kind of sit still and like, it's like a parking lot basically. Yeah. From here to there, there is. Oh my There's gosh. only two freeways. I know it sucks. What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to the Vision Lab Podcast in partnership with Nexum Creative. I'm your host, Ryan Cuffey, alongside my co-host, Mr. Ryan Mosley. The Vision Lab is the official growth mindset for all visionaries worldwide, showing mad love to the cigar community. It's here in the lab where we uncover people's visions and dreams and how those dreams actually come into reality. Folks, it's all about tapping into and becoming the absolute best versions of ourselves through self-discovery, self-examination, and self-actualization. Yo, Mo, it's time we take a trip out west and uh, holler at some folk. Well, who we got on the show today? Oh, Cuff, we have to say thank you to uh, our good friend Leo Brown of Barrels and Lease. Uh, I had a conversation with him recently. He said, hey, you need to talk to this lady named Christina. She would be great to have on you guys' show. And I said, well, send me the phone number. Let her know I'm going to give her a call. And, and as Leo does, he always takes care of us. Uh, yeah, Cuff, today's guest is a native of Porterville, California. She's a realtor and property manager in the lovely uh, town of San Diego, California. Please, please welcome Christina Rounds to the Vision Lab podcast. Hello. What up? What up? What up? Hey guys. How are we doing? Fantastic. How are you, lovely? I think so. I'm. You know what? It is an. It's a gorgeous night out. So I am yeah. doing fantastic. Good. Thanks for Good. having me. Well, I oh, shouldn't no thank problem. you yet. Let Let's see what we get. Let's see what we talk about first, and then I'll thank you after. I already told you, if you're good with Leo, you're good with us. You have no worries, I promise. <laughs> okay, got it. So getting started, right? So, uh, you know, re realtor and property manager by trade. But one of the cool things about you is that you're just kind of, I won't call you brand new, but you're 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 a, a, a new cigar smoker, if you will. And and the cool way you kind of got into it is very interesting to me. Can you tell our listeners kind of how you got into it? Yeah, so... Um... I got into it by, I wanted to host an event for some of the men in my life. And um, November 19 is National Men's Day. And 75% of suicides are men. That's, that's a really high wow. number. Yeah. So these last four or five years, I've been going through a lot of self-discovery. I've been going through um, a lot of life coaching. And in that came a lot of healing. I've had some gnarly situations with some of the men in my life. And um, when I was going through a divorce, there were some men that kind of came into my life at, you know, different times and just kind of helped me without them knowing through that healing process. So I kind of wanted to thank them. And it actually, I remembered from last year, 2020, 2020, 
that November 19th was, um, was National Men's Day. So I made sure that I wanted to plan something and I wanted to do a tasting at a brewery. So I was talking to the owner of the brewery and he said, you know what? You should call my friend. He's like, he's a cigar guy. Call him up. Let's do a pairing. I was like, that's brilliant. So I called Leo. Leo said, absolutely. Well, actually he wanted to know the story. So I told him the story and he came out and I had about 15 to 20 guys come and, and do a pairing. It was with beer, but they still had a great time. And that was when I learned about the different cuts, about the different styles. And so I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I'm, I'm intrigued. So what was so, the first cigar that, that Leo had you smoke? It was the, oh my gosh, you guys, the Carolina, the Carolina blue. Is that what we said? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yes. So it was Shout this one. Carolina blue. Yeah. And then the other one that I told you guys, the Maduros. Gotcha. We love, we love a good Maduro. So one of the cool things here, as far as the show, like I told you, we kind of open up the floor, right? And you, you touched on, you know, 75% of suicides being men. And at the same time, you've been through some interesting situations and you wanted to to really honor the men in your life, you know, given some of the experiences that you've had, like what, what, what made you still go down that road? Like some people have probably experienced some of the things that, that you might talk about throughout this interview and, they, and they've completely shut down. Like what's the internal mechanism that, that Christina has that says, you know what, I'm going to push through. I'm going to, I'm going to overcome if you will. Um, I hated feeling the poor me scenario like I hated the poor me poor me the victim victim oh they they don't like me they this and I just I hated that feeling um and so I just I it's it's funny I was going through a, a tough time in my marriage and um you guys are gonna laugh at this but so Cat Williams did a Netflix special and in one of his skits he says um, something to the effect of that him and his girlfriend are having these issues and that he's telling her, you know, she's telling him, you don't make me happy. You don't make me happy. And he says to her, like, bitch, it's called self-esteem. Like you make yourself happy. Right. <laughs> and so I kid you not, I'm downstairs in the, in the garage, um, folding clothes and Cat Williams came to my head and I was like, Oh my gosh, it's not him. It's me. Wow. I have, I have to fix me. I'm trying, I'm doing all these life coaching, all these things to try to fix the marriage because that's supposed to be my end goal, but I need to, I need to take care of me first. So I went back to the roots roots. I mean, I started um, checking out foods that I say that I, I always used to hate, you know, like you guys are going to be upset, but avocado, I'm, I don't like avocados. I don't like watermelon. I don't like mangoes, but I went back to make sure that those are the things that I really didn't like. Um, I went back to hobbies. Did I really actually like these hobbies? Did I not like these hobbies? And in those conversations with the life coaches and trying to pinpoint where things were, um, I mean, at, at 17 years old, I was raped by a 33 year old and oh, wow. it was my mom's, it was my mom's boyfriend's friend. And, and this is how fucked up the scenario is, right? As my, my dad was in and out of my life since I was like 12. And I ended up having, I ended up fantasizing about having a relationship with him. He was telling me that we were going to get married. He was telling me. And so then it became like, not only did he number one, take my virginity away. And it was, it wasn't the, you know, it was, it was in a rape scenario. But then now I'm, I'm wanting to marry this man. Wow. And the only way, and the, I couldn't even say like the only way I got out of it was because he ended up marrying one of my friends, like oh, wow. my, one of my friend's sisters, you know? So it was kind of like, that's, that's a fucked up scenario. Um, I was molested as a child and then I ended up getting married at a very young age. I got married at 19 um, because I got pregnant and he was stealing from us that I didn't know from me and, and our two kids. And so then that trust was lost. And then I got remarried after that. And 
My third baby was about three weeks old and I found him talking to other women online and I stayed, you know, I stayed for 13 years. We ended up being together for 16 years and it was just hit after hit after hit. And these men that are supposed to, you know, especially in the Latino world, they're supposed to take care of you. Every single one of them was just doing me dirty. There's a lot to unpack, right? From, <laughs> yeah. and, and I mean, first of all, thank you for being so vulnerable um, mm. and, and, and sharing your story and, and we're going to go into it, but there's a couple of things that, that I want to un- unveil the curtain or, or pull the curtain back, if you pull will, back. because it's important, right? Like the reason why this platform exists is, is so not only can we educate people, but we can help people through whatever situations. And there's a lot that you just went through, right? Let me, let me go ahead and get this out the way too. I too do <laughs> not like uh, avocados or watermelon. So I'll put that oh! out there mangoes oh, eh, I can do yeah for sure and so um you said the word earlier which I'm really really big on right now especially the beginning of 2022 and that is uh kind of taking a self inventory on, on on who you are right do I really not like mangoes do I really not like avocados what are some of the uh hobbies that I said I didn't like or maybe you know that type of thing and then you started to look back in your past with the molestation and the rape and we'll get into that later but mm-hmm. talk to our uh, our listeners okay and our, and on all of the people that follow us are vi- what we call our visionaries talk to them about the importance of doing a self reflection doing self inventory oh well i think you have to it, no one's going to be able to prepare you for it because your own, I guess, backstory, your own, your own history is yours and, and people go through it differently. Right. So for me, it was having to figure out, I, I guess for me, it was, I've always been labeled something. I've always been somebody's mom. I was somebody's daughter. I was somebody's wife. I was somebody's girlfriend. And I never felt like I was myself. So I had to figure out who that was, but I didn't Mm. know because it's always been somebody else telling me who I was. So it was, and I think that's why it was so important to me. I mean, I went so far back to, for my 20 year high school reunion, um, I went to every single place that I lived in my hometown and just reflected on that, on, on, on my memories there, the good, the bad, the ugly, the scary, the happy, everything. I went to the elementary school. I went to the high school, the middle school, um, to some of the locations where I, I physically got into a fight. Like I took myself back in time to every single memory and just tried to um, well, there were some times where I, I screamed. There were some times that I cried. There were some yeah. times that I, I forgave what happened in some of those, in some of those apartments and in, in some of those houses and just wanting to go through that healing process, whatever that looked like to me was what was important. I had so, to. So on, on that journey, right? Like, I think that you, you kind of identified that you may you're probably going to encounter pain along this oh, process of, of, of figuring that out. And what I love about what you said is that, well, I love what I love about where you were in your life is that, you know, you're not 19 or 20 anymore. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're hitting the reset button and finding yourself right now in current times. And I think that that deserves a huge, huge pat on your back. Um, I think oh, a lot of people that, that, yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people need to understand that this this process of of finding yourself and and becoming a better version of yourself, it should include pain, because you have to I, you have to not only identify that pain, but you have to be able to work through that pain to get to the other side. Absolutely, because you have to figure out where that where that stems from, you know what why things trigger you, and a lot of the times those triggers come from pain. But the only way you can go there is by healing from that. You know, there's those memes that say you don't go, you don't go back to where 
where you've been hurt. And I say, no, you run to it. You know, you have to, you have to face it head on because if you, which is what a lot of us do is we just suppress it. You know, they tell you, right. oh, get over it. Oh, do this. Oh, get over it. You know, it's, it's not that easy. You know, you have to, you have to go through it to really be able to dissect it and, and figure out and start to tell yourself that a lot of these things are not as cliche as it sounds are not your fault. A lot of the times, even the people that have hurt me, um, it's also not their fault. It's also things that they have gone through. You know, we talk about, you know, the, the, a lot of the key words now is, is generational curses and, you know, and, and stopping that, you know, it's like, we have to learn to forgive those that have hurt us too, wow. because they didn't know any better. Wow. And, and it's very, um, right on time because that was actually going to be my next question. I mean, you, you, you talked about being raped at 17 and, and losing your virginity, um, being molested when you were a young child. How are you able to, to forgive those men in your life and then be able to put on such a, 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 you know, a special event for, for those men in your life now that have done a lot of, you know, great things in your life. Like, how are you able to forgive those from back in the past? Um, I, like I said, it's more of just, of just, and, and again, cliche is just preying on them and just knowing that they probably didn't know any better. A lot of times people say that, um, in, in the town that I grew up in and, you know, God, I hope they forgive me, but, and, and in, even in the Latino community, um, it was normal for teens to be going out with 20 year olds and 30 year olds um, because you were supposed to be what they would call a stealing. So we would go to a, we would go to a dance, right? At 15, 16 years old. And then a 23 year old, a 24 year old would want to dance with us and we would get all giggly. And then they would take them to Mexico. They would marry them. They would have babies and then they would bring them back. And then they would have their mm -hmm. lives here. And so growing up, I thought that that's what we were supposed to do. But, but what I didn't encounter, obviously, was that, um, was, was that it was obviously for this, for my scenario, was that it was going to be forceful and things, but, but that was the norm. And so that's why I say that I even, I had that, that fantasy of, oh, we're going to get married. Oh, we're going to have our own children. Oh, he, you know, he lives in the nice part of town. He has his own house. Oh, we're going to have kids, you know? Now, now, especially now that I have kids, I'm like, I can't imagine. Wow. I cannot imagine my children, you know, having intercourse with, with a 30, 30 year old person. Like I would kill someone, you know, like there's, there's no, just, doubt. no, you just don't do that. <laughs> you <laughs> no know? doubt. And both of but, us have two girls, so, or have girls. Yeah, yeah, we're girl dads, so we understand. Yeah, for sure. So, so it was, it, so it was tough, but in the forgiving part, I had to, I, I had to, it had to have been for me, just, just like anybody that hurts me, you know, it's, it's, you make the excuse of, you know, hurt people, hurt people, and that's what they do. And, you know, we, we're all facing our own demons. We're all trying to figure it out, figure it out as well. And I tell, especially my 16 year old, um, fortunately for him and fortunately for the world that I've gone through that healing process. So now I'm teaching him, you know, don't be the person that someone has to heal from. Like, don't do things, be, be mindful of who you are, be mindful of how you treat people because you don't want someone to have to go to therapy because of you. You don't want to have, good. you know, someone to go to life coaching because of something you did. Yeah. So be yeah. mindful of that. Yeah. So I'm going to switch gears here in just a second, but before I do, uh, you, you're mentioning people, right? Uh, and I know one of the underlying things of our show is just, just people in all the different ways that we all interact with each other, right? Good, bad, and different, all that. But one of the, the, the people that has supported this show from the very, very beginning is uh, Edwina Brown and the entire family over at Blowing Smoke Cigar Lounge. 
Uh, EB, thank you guys for all your support. If you are anywhere, visionaries on the southern part of the Metroplex, make sure you get to vis- uh, to excuse me, Vision Lab. We all work on our own cigar lounge. That's another podcast, but make sure you get to Blow and Smoke Cigar Lounge. Uh, the address is 1604 North I-35 in Lancaster. We promise you'll be taken care of. Uh, great humidor, great staff, TVs. Uh, it, it is the lounge you want to be at if you're anywhere in the southern part of the Metroplex. So, what up, EB? Absolutely, absolutely. As we shift gears. You've got you go through the therapy, you go through the praying, you know, the, the reflection, going back to the old neighborhood, all the all the past experiences. When did you, Christina, really start to see the the other side of things? When did you when did you when do you come out of that? When do you start to see yourself in the mirror every day and realize, you know what, the sun does rise again. I'm better for it and and I'm gonna keep pushing versus being a prisoner to it. Oh. It's a struggle every day, but you know what? I, it's I. I actually told my life coach a couple of days ago. The struggle is always going to be there. The depression will probably always be there. But I've learned some tools on what I need to get myself out of it. So by that I mean when I I already know when I'm going to fall into my depression state. I already know when I'm going to fall into my poor me, poor me stage. Um, I could feel it. It's boiling. And um, I also had a brother who passed away and, and he and I were very, very close. And so especially around his birthday, which is around the holidays, I can feel it. I can sense it. So for me, it's knowing when it's coming, being aware that it's coming and what do I need to do to get myself out of it before those moments used to last a month and now they're lasting days. So I know that my healing is is, is on the up and up. Right. So some of the things that help me is, um, isolating myself. I isolate, I I call my, I tell people, I put myself on a timeout. I turtle. I want to be away from everybody because I want to, I want to talk myself through the process. I don't want to go to anybody else and ask them what they think because they don't know what I'm feeling. So a lot of the times I sit there and I talk to myself, why are you feeling like this? It's temporary. Um, I, I drive a Jeep Wrangler. And one of the big things for me is taking the tops down, blaring the music and going for a drive. Luckily, we live in San Diego. So we have a lot of really cool mountain tops that I can just drive up, park the Jeep and just kind of reflect. And, you know, when you're sitting up on those views and you see the millions of houses underneath you, you know that there are millions of people that are going through something. You know, we're all struggling. You know, I, I go back to, you know, we all have our own demons that we're trying to, trying to maneuver through. And so your problems don't necessarily seem so much, you know? So instead of wanting to, again, feel, feel bad, I've kind of changed my mindset on just spreading love. So wherever I can, I do. Um, and I'm actually quite proud of that. And you should be, right? And I, and I, I love that you're, you, you have learned enough about yourself to say, you know, it's time to get in the Jeep. We're going to drive up the mountain and overlook and, and come to the re- realization that, you know what? A lot of people have a lot of shit that they're dealing with. You know, mine, wherever it falls, it falls, right? But, mm-hmm. you know, everybody has stuff that they're dealing with. Um, I'm really curious, especially since we're kind of talking about depression and, and things along that nature. With, with social media and the internet being what it is, why do you think that so many people continue to struggle with, uh, you know, depression and, and self-worth and, and kind of question, you know, their self-worth? When we hear all the time, there's life coaches, there's books, there's podcasts um, that are out there because there's a lot of available resources that can help you. Um, but but still, we still find ourselves in these struggles. Why do you think that is? Because it's painful. Mm-hmm. And who who wants to feel in pain? You know, who want who wants to have to go through those trenches? And especially when they feel like they're going through it by themselves. I think with social media, um, people can use it for good and evil, right? And 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 you you do with it what you what well. Let me back up. What I do with my social media is when I'm feeling even upset or depressed, 
I go to my own social media. I don't look at yours. I don't look at my friends. I go to my own. I post my, my social media, my, especially my Instagram is more of a diary for myself. So sometimes when I, when I say things online, I'm talking to myself. I'm reminding myself of the fun times I've had, because when you just like, just like music, right? Like one of the, the other things that I do is when you're feeling depressed, I go back to the music that used to make me feel good between my, you know, when I was 15 and 17 and 18 years old, right? When we had no problems, we had no, we had no baby daddies, we had no bills, you know, all we had to do was just get up and go to school. Those were the fun times, right? So I go back to that music and that puts me back into that, that good mood and That's those right. good memories. So yeah. then it kind of just like, you know, it just, you know, it's a mind fuck to be quite honest. So that's the same thing that I do with my social media. I post in there. There's sometimes that I'll post some negative things. And, and like when I'm, when I'm dealing with my anxiety, I'll post something about it, but then I'll give some tips because I also know that people are also watching me. And so I try to be a little bit more vulnerable um, on some of those things. And, and I'm also still just trying to find myself. And I do it, I do it for me, not necessarily for anybody else. I have a, I have a good friend, um, who taught me this saying probably like three years ago. And I, I always remind myself when there's an issue, right? He said, he says, if you're not fucking me, financing me or feeding me, I don't give a fuck. And Ooh. so like, I know. Ooh. <laughs> I know. Well, okay then, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so, <laughs> Maybe we should make that so, the title of this episode. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> I, yeah. So, yeah. so with that, you know, I'm constantly reminding myself of that, you know, of like, well, wait a minute, let me, let me assess the situation here and, you know, live off of that. And well, I think that all, more of us should. Yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to steal that by the way. Okay. <laughs> um, let me know. All not, right. I'll send it to you guys. <laughs> no, I, believe me. It's in oh, If you're not okay. fucking me, feeding me or financing me, I don't give a fuck. I, I don't give a fuck. Right. All right. So um, I'm, I'm glad you said this, because I think a lot of, you know, 40 plus year olds, maybe kind of, I don't want to call it midlife crisis, but like you're, you're starting to figure out like, you know, am I where I want it to be in life? Right. And you, you start to have this self-reflection. And so do you feel like uh, Christina is where she's supposed to be? Or do you find yourself upset that I'm not where I want it to be in life? Because I think a lot of us are dealing with that right now. Right. But who says we have to be a certain way? Who set, who, who made up those rules that you have to be at a certain, at a certain, um, live in a certain house or have a certain car or do certain things by the time or X, Y, Z, you know, who says I'm, I am honestly starting to learn and love that I make my own fucking rules in my life. I yes. can do whatever I want. You can't yeah. tell me what you, you can tell me what, whatever you want. doesn't mean I have to listen to you. So these, these last few years, I have just been like, I, I don't care if you think that me cussing too much is an issue. I don't listen to me. If you don't like the shoes I wear, you don't have to buy them but this is what I feel comfortable in. This is what I like to wear. This is the makeup I like. What, it, it shouldn't matter. And I think that's, we do the comparison thing a lot, you know, yeah. and it, 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 it's silly. It's uh, comparison, so comparison is the, uh, what's the quote? Comparison or, 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 you know, comparison is the thief of joy. That's the, that's the quote. Yes. Comparison is the thief of joy. Yep. Um, so so you've got this, yeah, you've got this event, right? So, you know, to take, take, take the turn. What what happens at this event where you honor the men in your lives who've done right by you? So they had no idea that I was doing an event for them. I and it's actually really funny that they all thought that I was that I was asking them on a date. <laughs> like every single one of these men thought that I was like asking them on a personal date with me. So that was kind of cute and funny because I sent them a text. I said, "Meet me here at this time," and that was that was all I gave them. And I told them that I was feeding them and that was it. Um, and they show up and my life coach, actually, um, I wanted him to be a guest. And I told him what I was doing and he asked if he could speak. And I said, sure. 
So he, um, he, he did a little spiel for the boys and they absolutely loved it. He gave them a little, um, some life coaching sessions, like a quick one, and they all really enjoyed it. And then we went outside and, and learned some, some things about cigars and beer. And I gave my little spiel. The boys don't know the full length of what was happening, like the, 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 um, the magnitude of it. They just knew that I wanted to honor them. And um, individually, they all reached out to me and said that, number one, they have never been so appreciative before because they have never felt so honored by someone else. And the other thing that they thought was really cool was that being that I did have a history where I didn't quote unquote trust men or feel safe with men, that it was kind of cool that I was able to kind of turn my thoughts and my feelings towards men and kind of honor them and appreciate them and show them that in, you know, they say a grand scale, but it just, you know, in front of so many people. And I thought that was kind. I thought that was kind of cool, but I also thought that was kind of sad. Sad in that I feel that we put so much pressure on men, especially even during the pandemic. You know, we put so much pressure, provide for us, take care of us, um, be there for us, hold us emotionally, hold us up physically. But who's holding them? Who's holding the men in our lives when they're going through things, when they feel all the pressures, who's honoring them? And so I kind of wanted to say like, and this is how that started was, I wanted to say to them, I see you. I know that you guys are going through something and I want to say thank you and honor you. It just so happened that in that came healing for me. Mm. So it was, <laughs> it was a really good, a really good event. It's um, funny you mentioned it because Cuff and I have had these talks offline, right? Just about the, just the stuff that, that men go through. And you're asking the question like, who, 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 who takes care of us? Right. And I think what it is, is he and I think that the day we had that conversation, we're both like, well, ultimately, unfortunately, the sad part of what you're talking about is Christina. We, a lot of us feel like nobody, nobody cares. Like it's really suck it up and, and push forward. Like you can cry right. about it later on, but, a lot of us feel like, hey, like whatever your problem is, most of us feel like nobody cares anyway. So what's the point in, in really dwelling on it? You better figure out a way to, to push through and overcome. Well, I think the other thing, too, right, like as a man, you, you're, you're supposed to be brawny and brave and, and, and go out and hunt. And like that's the historical condition that, way. condition that we all have accepted. Right. Right. Wrong or indifferent. That's just the, mm -hmm. the facts. And so it's really cool to hear that there are women out there that do appreciate what a, like men today, right? It, it, and especially the trauma that you experienced uh, as as a young young girl. Um, and we don't we never talk about men's feelings. It's starting to get a little buzz over the last year or so. But I commend you. I think it's that's why I was clapping. Oh, I mean, like you. no one no one talks about that. And and you know <laughs> you're right. Like we we if we're struggling with you know, being a breadwinner or provider, or we should be where we, you know, a different spot in our life and we're not, or, or we're trying to overcome, you know, jail or whatever the situation is, right? Like there's no one for us to talk to. And I think that's, that's what I was saying. That's, that's the sad part. Imagine, imagine what the world would look like if men had that sense of peace, right? On, on who they are and that they're able to also be vulnerable. I mean, God gave us these feelings on both sides, right? And so he, you guys also are allowed to express them. But if you guys have that sense of peace, right? And that sense of where you guys can feel at home, then you guys are going to want to protect that home, right? And so then us as women, then we can come, we can come towards you and feel safe. So it's like, okay, you guys, we have to figure out how to work together instead of butting heads. We have to figure out and appreciate that, that men also have feelings, that men also go through things, that men also have pressures. They just don't know how to deal with them because we don't allow them to. So good.
That is symbiotic a, relationship. Absolutely. That's, that's the word, symbiotic. So uh, this being the vision lab, when I use the word vision, what comes to mind, Christina? Um, my thought is the ripple effect. If I can spread love, if I can spread kindness, and if I could spread a, just a little tiny nugget and it ripples and that somebody ends up doing the same thing, I will be completely happy. You're the first person to answer the question that way. Like, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, she's the first person to even mention the ripple effect on this show. Well, we've heard butterfly effect, which is effectively the oh. same thing. But yeah, I, I mean, I absolutely love it. And, and I think that you need to, at least from this conversation, you know, this is the first time we've, we've met. Like I've been positively impacted by your words. Like I always, we'll talk about this at the mm -hmm. end, but like oh. there's always nuggets of wisdom, right? And you're dropping those nuggets on this trail of life. And like, for me, I know I can go back in the archives and listen to this whenever, five, 10, 15 years from now and be positively impacted and affected by these words. Like it, it's very profound oh. and very, it, it's, it's, it's driving home a good point for me. Oh, oh. well, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> so, <Said>, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so by trade, if you will, by trade, you are a, a realtor and a property manager in, 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 a, in, a, in a great market of San Diego, California. Whether uh, a, a person listening to the show is a realtor, anybody wants to get a real estate business, lawyer, doctor, whatever their, that person's pursuit or, pursuits or passion may be, what would be the number one nugget of advice you would give to somebody who's listening to this show or, or hearing it uh, when it comes to pursuing what it is they want to do? It's it, it's relationships. You have to you have to understand relationships. If you can understand relationships, then you can maneuver pretty much through anything. For, for me in the property management side, you know, I keep a good relationship with my tenants, with my landlords and my vendors. And I think that that's what makes it successful. Um, there's not very many property managers that I know out here. I know a lot of realtors, but not a lot of property managers. And, you know, a lot of times they think it's because um, it's, it's hard and it's difficult and you get phone calls at all hours of the night, but it's like, no, I keep a good relationship with my tenants. I guide them. I discipline them to basically tell them like, this is, this is the way that, that the business is going to go. If you follow these rules, basically, then we're going to be golden. And I've been doing it 12 years, only two evictions. I've had about 3,100 tenants. It's not too shabby. No, I would say those are pretty solid numbers. Uh, I'm, I'm almost, <laughs> I'm almost afraid to think. You say, you know, we're going to be golden. What, what is the opposite of being golden with Christina Rounds look like? Ooh, I am a triple Leo, so that's dangerous. That just wait a second. What's a triple Leo? <laughs> that my moon, my 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 everything is Leo. Well, what's your so birthday? So loud, uh, August eleventh. I'm well, um, August first. Ah, oh, so you're also a Leo. Yeah, I don't know if I'm a triple Leo, but definitely <laughs> probably Leo. not. We're very rare. <laughs> Goodness gracious. So as we kind of, you know, turn turn the knob a little bit further, right? When when it comes to being inspired, and I think that's one of the things that for the new year, cuff, I'll talk to you about this offline. Like I've got kind of got written in my book. We've met with some people recently, and I've been really inspired to really do things at a higher level, right? Who have been some of the people who have inspired you to 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 be who you are? Because you you've been through a lot, but you've got this you've got this spirit about you to where it's mm -hmm. it's it's touched a, a certain part of my of my personality. It, it registers with me. So who who me has too. inspired you? Oh my goodness! You know I'm I I'm just gonna say it because the person that comes to mind, just to be completely brutally honest, is myself. Because I feel like, honestly, I'm sitting here, I'm talking to you gentlemen, and I'm telling you guys my story, and I'm not sad. I'm not crying. I'm not yeah. like, oh my God, did I share too much? Oh my God, I shouldn't have said that. Oh my God, who yeah. are, you know, where is it going to go? You know, 
Um, I've worked fucking hard, man. I've shed a ton of fucking tears. I've, you know, I've, I've thought to myself plenty of times, I don't want to fucking be here. If this is how my dad is going to treat me, I don't want to be on this earth. If this is how my, you know, if I don't, can't have my brother, I don't want to be here. I just, I have gone through some shit and I can still say that I still want to help people. I still want to figure out where, what I can do to get them not to feel that way. You know, I have a lot of friends that say, Christina, you're always, you're always wanting to help. You're always, you're always there for people. And my response is, I never want people to feel like I felt. I, I just, I, it's such a, it's, it's lonely. It's scary. And, and it's dark. And if I were to see myself, you know, cause again, we talk about self-reflection and, and I, I go back into my life, into my, into my past life. And I don't even recognize that person anymore. I see all the things that I, that I have gone through and I don't even recognize some of those feelings anymore. And I think that's pretty fucking dope. I agree. I myself. I agree. No, you should, you should be proud of yourself, right? Like you, you've worked your ass off to get to where you are today. And like you said, without being able to, without, with the ability to be so vulnerable, without worrying about crying or anything like that, like, I, 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 I commend you. I applaud you no, for sure. You. It's taken a lot. And I mean, I mean, think about it. I'm talking to two men about the shit that I've been through. Like, it's just like, oh my, you know, so it's, it's, it's kind of just, I didn't have, um, I didn't have role models. I just didn't. I've always had to figure it out by myself. And, you know, I've, I've, I've read books, you know, I've obviously done the life coaching. Um, I've, I've, you know, read quotes and things, but to say that somebody who's, who's inspired me, I don't know if I can have someone. You know, you, you said life coaching a couple of times on, uh, during the pod and we've had life coaches on uh, shout out to Cameron Thompson, shout out to Anthony trucks. Um, what are the, the talk about the value of having a life coach? I had four life coaches in about in a span of four or five years. What I love about life coaching is that um, they kind of walk you through the process of healing. And even though it's going to be ugly, they, you know, it's kind of like um, of, of giving you the tools on how to walk yourself through it. Right. So I feel I, I used to do therapy with my ex-husband and that didn't work, but you know, with that, it was, <laughs> with that, it just seemed like we were just rehashing everything, you know? And I feel that with life coaching, yes, we were also rehashing, but it was dissecting a portion and then moving you forward. And then, di you know, once you figure that part out, then, okay, now you're dissecting the next part, you know? And so I think for me, it was really having to start over. And my favorite um, life coach, Reggie, he talks to me or anybody really like, what is the first memory in your life that, that you knew that your life changed? And Mine was when I was four years old, my mom was in a very abusive relationship and my brother was, a, he was probably, I mean, he was an infant. So he was, I don't know, he was under six months old and my mom and my, um, and her boyfriend got into a huge fight and he was telling her to get the fuck out of the car and he was trying to push her out of the car while my mom was trying to hand me my baby brother as she's getting kicked out of the car while we're driving on the freeway. And that was when I realized that I, um, I was going to have to take care of this baby at four years old. 
And I think that that's when my life like started, started to change for me. Cause that's like the first memory I have. Wow. And since then I always took care of my siblings. I was always just so protective over them. So now they could, now, you know, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, like you just, as you were talking this out, I was like, she's going to be one of those people who is always helping others and taking care of people besides the life coaches and, 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 and therapy sessions, things like that. Like who helps to take care, takes care of Christina. Christina. <laughs> well, and, but for real, like that's an easy answer, right? Like we know you've been through a lot and you take care of yourself, but who takes care of you? Like who provides, I, I, who provides Christina peace of mind when things get rough? Is it a mentor, um, a life coach, family member? I, I spend a lot of time with people older than me um, in their like 60s. And I kind of, we just shoot the shit, talk, talk about whatever. Um, that recharges me. Um, I do do a lot for the community. So I'm, I, I do a lot of like networking and things like that. And so that has brought in a lot of those, a lot of those key people. But even, even that, I, I like my alone time. I like to do things by myself. And the reason being is because when, when things are going a certain way, I don't want anybody to give me their opinion. I want to figure out this shit by myself. I, because if, if it's a decision that I need to make and if it's the wrong decision, I have myself to answer to. But if it's the right decision, then I'm going to be proud of myself. And um, I have really tried to figure out what is that going to look like for me in, in recharging and in taking care of myself? And so, like I mentioned, it's the Jeep. I fucking love my, my Lucy. Every, all of my friends know it. Lucy's my baby. Like, don't fuck with her. That's, that's my girl. Um, but I mean, today I finished what I needed to take care of this morning and I went to the beach by myself and I just hung out. I read a book. Um, my Spanish sucks. So, I want to improve my, my Spanish. So I got a book that's in Spanish so that I can start practicing my Spanish. I brought my journal and I just journaled out there. And so it's things that are going to make me happy. That, that is what I want to not, well, yeah, perfect. You know, I want to do that for myself because the other thing that I'm telling my son is make yourself whole, make yourself happy because when you get into a relationship, they need to add to that. I do not want to be in a relationship where I have to, I have to um, expect them to make me happy or, or um, take me to go do things. I want to be able to do that by myself because when, if, if, and when there's a breakup, it's not going to, it's not going to change my life that much. It's not going to change his life that much, you know? So I want to figure out and continue to do the things that make me happy by myself. So that if I do have a man one day and he can add to it, great. And if I don't have a man, I'm still happy. I like it. Uh, partner, is it is it that time yet? <laughs> yes, sir. So we are going to, uh, as we call it, land the plane, Christina. And thank you again Ooh, for, for your time. This has been this has been great. I'm, I'm thank you again to, to Leo Brown of Barrels and Leaves for for getting us connected. You've you've been you've been everything you said and, and then some. This has been awesome. So oh, uh, one of the questions we ask everybody as we wind down the show, uh, it's you and there's a round table. I know you like your solitude, but unfortunately you got to share the room with some people. <laughs> uh, it's you, it's a round table, some cigars in the room. There are five other seats at the table. Who do you want at your table? And the only caveat or stipulation, if you will, is that you can't have whatever religious deity you believe in. Outside of that, dead or alive, who are the five people you want at your table? Oh, my gosh. Um, Maya Angelou. Um, oh, my God. Gary V. Deepak Chopra and my son. 
You got one more. One more? <gasps> oh my gosh, you guys, and Jimmy Fallon because ugh, the things that I would do to that man. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot Gotta about him. Love Gotta love it. Oh, this is awesome. You know, I, I certainly have been um, enriched by this conversation. And so um, you, you talked about going out to the beach and journaling. And, and you know, if you haven't read the book by how, um, what is it? Um, Miracle Morning oh, by how, yeah, uh, how I run, you need to definitely yeah. check that out. But, okay. um, you know, as we land a plane, what type of books are you reading, like, to clear your mind or reset or whatever you need to do? Oh, um, like I said, they're, they're, some of them are in Spanish right now. So um, the one, well, one of them is The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. So I'm reading that on audio. And then um, the other one that I'm reading is um, Mujer de Mis Sueños. So it's Lady of My Dreams, which is also a motiv motivational book in Spanish. Love that. Love that. But The Go-Giver is probably one of my favorite oh. books. I can read that one over and over and yes. over again. Yes. This is such a good <laughs> book. Such a good such book. Such a good book. I totally geeked uh, out after I read it and I sent him an Instagram like dm'd him on instagram yeah and he responded and i was just like all geeked out yeah that's <laughs> awesome that's awesome and that was a dope it's a, listen that's a dope book that's that's the top 10 book for sure for sure yeah um, same here what's the long-term vision for christina rounds Woo, i want to conquer the world how the ripple effect i just want to plant seeds So it's an astute answer. <laughs> but I, that's that's my plan. If Christina so if Rounds plant were, the seeds. If Christina Rounds were a book, what would the title be? If you're not fucking me, fine. If you're repeating me, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that will be used, believe me. Yeah. That may be too long of a title. They have to call it three Fs. Yeah, we, we will find a way to incorporate that for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, Christina, for again, thank you so much for being on the show. But yeah, before we, you know, land the plane, how can our visionaries, by the way, if you're still tuning in, thank you so much for your love and your support. Um, if you like the content that you heard, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit that like button. You guys know how it is, it's 2022. Um we need the algorithm to work in our favor so you guys can hear more of us. But how can our visionaries find you, Christina? They can find me on all social media platforms under Christina Rounds, which is R-O-U-N-D-S. Beautiful. Simple, easy peasy. There's not very many of us out there. <laughs> Especially triple Leos. <laughs> Holla! <laughs> but See? I was, it's kind of funny. I was, I'm black, Mexican, and Japanese, born in Oklahoma. And a triple Leo. So I'm very rare. You are definitely right. one of one. <laughs> well, this was fun, so, guys. Yeah, absolutely. So I got one more. I've got um, another question for you. Um, okay. In case you didn't realize, the Vision Lab does, we do have a magical time machine. Okay. So, uh, what advice would Christina Rounds, what advice would you be giving yourself from five years ago? So, you're five years younger. What advice is today's version of yourself telling yourself from five years ago? just to keep growing it, it the journey has been has been hard but the further the further i go the more fun it is and that is my goal i want to get to a place where um i'm just having fun we're yeah. here for a short period of time you know i i tell people life is too short to be boring that's good that's really and good. i just yeah, I just want to have fun. Whatever that may look like at whatever point. That's so good. Um, I'm going to make you five years older, so forgive me, okay? Um, what is the older yeah. version of Christina? What advice is she giving you today? Um, 
it's probably going to be something similar. It's just to pay it forward. Lead with lead, lead with love and pay it forward. Lead with love and pay it forward. You are dropping you all some good, Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Facts. Facts. Well, again, um, those are phenomenal answers. And, and thank you so much. Uh, like I said, and I truly, truly mean this. I've been enriched Aww. by this conversation. Um, hopefully this is not the last time that we uh, we speak. And, you know, we're going to definitely get out to, to San Diego, um, you know, show Callie some love. Yes, please do. Please do. And yes. If you guys ever need me to come back on, let me know. I'd love to. This is awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. So to all of our visionaries that are still tuning in, thank you again so uh, so much. Remember, it's about you. Make yourself whole. Uh, each one of our guests are dropping nuggets of wisdom here on the trail of life. Ultimately, it's up to you to pick them up. Ladies and gentlemen, my name Amen. is Ryan Mosley. He is Ryan Cuffey. Thank you again to our lovely guest, Christina Rounds. Uh, we will see you guys next week on another great episode of the Vision Lab podcast. Blessings. Thank you.